As the Cold War loomed on the horizon shortly after World War II, Canada worried about the possibility of Soviet bombers flying over the Arctic Ocean, ready to deliver nuclear payloads on North American targets. Consequently, Canadian Air Force officials made a bold decision and built their own indigenously developed fighter interceptor from scratch. Flying for the first time on January 19, 1950, Avro-Canada's CF-100 Canuck was a long-range all-weather interceptor with an advanced radar system fitted on the nose. During its run, Canada's good old Canuck was one of the world's best all-weather fighters and one of NATO's most valued aircraft. And for a while, it was the only fighter of its type used by the organization's forces in Europe, where it excelled at protecting the western skies from continuous Soviet attacks in extremely harsh zero-visibility conditions. A Canadian Aircraft As the Cold War began and warfare capabilities evolved, the Canadian government decided to increase its defense budget. Royal Canadian Air Force officials believed that a self-sufficient military aviation industry of local origin would be of great value and identified the need for a new jet-powered interceptor aircraft capable of patrolling the country's sizable northern territory that could operate in extreme weather conditions. According to Air Marshal Wilfred Curtis, no existing or planned aircraft could satisfy such specifications, so the Air Force decided to issue a request for proposal in 1946. While the local aviation industry typically entertained the idea of developing 100% indigenous aircraft, none had been pushed into actual production to that point. However, this would change with Avro Canada's proposal. On October 13, 1946, the Canadian government granted the contract to the local manufacturer, allowing the company to begin work on the XC-100. The team was led by Chief Engineer Edgar Atkin, but the group was also advised by former de Havilland aircraft designer John Frost, now the chief design engineer for the company's military projects. While the first prototype successfully flew on January 19, 1950, the second was lost in an accident a year later. In response to the failure, Avro Canada and Edgar Atkin dismissed several members of the design team and focused on rectifying a significant structural design error. The team then developed a simple modification that was easy to install in the other pre-production aircraft, but now with a local Orenda 2 engine that pilots liked very much. With the program now moving steadily, the Canadian Air Force reached an additional agreement with Avro Canada to produce 10 pre-production fighters and 30 Avro Oranda engines. The first production version, designated Mark III, flew successfully for the first time in October of 1952. The models would receive minor adjustments during the following years, and the now renamed CF-100 aircraft performed hundreds of cold weather and armament tests with the United States Air Force in the Eglin Air Force Base. Unparalleled. The Avro Canada CF-100 Canuck was the only Canadian-designed fighter interceptor to enter mass production, and it was known by its numerous crews as the Clunk, due to the noise it made through the front landing gear as it retracted into itself after takeoff. The company's engineers devised a standard tubular fuselage, long enough to house the necessary fuel stores, avionics, and other internal structures, and was armed with 8.5mm caliber machine guns. Also, a two-person crew sat inside the cockpit in tandem. This jet interceptor weighed roughly 17 tons, with a top speed of 650 miles per hour and a range of up to 1,000 miles, and also featured a short takeoff run and high climb rate. The Canuck interceptor was explicitly built for all weather or night conditions and high altitude capabilities, thanks to an advanced radar set and fire control system behind the aircraft's nose. On December 18, 1952, Avro Chief Development Test Pilot Yanuz Zurakovsky flew a CF-100 fourth version prototype up to Mach 1.1 in a dive from 45,000 feet. This flight turned Canada's only locally made aircraft into the first straight-wing jet aircraft in the world to achieve supersonic flight without the aid of rocket power. 
operational history. When the aircraft entered service, it was one of the few interceptors in the world with all-weather capability. As such, the Canadian Canuck was one of NATO's most valued aircraft. With the formation of the NATO Western Alliance and the insurgence of the Cold War, many believed that Europe would be the next potential battleground. Others were convinced that the Korean War was a diversion to confuse the West and lead forces to Asia. As such, Canada committed to providing several ground forces and squadrons in an effort to deter potential attacks on the West. These Canadian aircraft squadrons were set to follow the North Atlantic Ferry Route, developed during World War II by the Royal Air Force Ferry Command. The aircraft would take off from Newfoundland and fly to Greenland, Iceland, Scotland, and England. The first aircraft to carry out these flights were the F-86 Sabres in Operation Leapfrog, and the type flew the path on four separate occasions between May of 1952 and September of 1953. However, after the program's top officials recognized it as an all-weather night fighter interceptor, the squadron Sabres were replaced by Canucks. This decision provided NATO with a powerful interception capability, especially as there were no other night fighters in all of Europe. Under the codename Operation Nimble Bat, the Canucks followed the same route, defending North American airspace against potential intruders between October of 1956 and August of 1957. Around the same time, and up to 1962, four CF-100 Canuck squadrons were sent to a base in Europe, with the 1st Air Division in a decision influenced by NATO. The CF-100 Canuck typically retained a natural metal finish when flying in North America. However, the Clunks flying in overseas missions were given a British-style disruptive camouflage paint job with dark sea gray and green on top and light sea gray on the bottom. For a time, the CF-100 was the only fighter capable of flying with zero visibility and in poor weather conditions in all of NATO's arsenal. And at its operational strength peak in the mid to late 1950s, the CF-100 served with nine Royal Canadian Air Force squadrons. Throughout its three-decade-long service, both its role and weaponry changed throughout the years, from the initial 8.5mm caliber machine guns to rockets, guided missiles, and even earlier versions of the AIM-7 Sparrow air-to-air -air missile. Many of the world's operational CF-100s operated under the North American Air Defense Command, or NORAD, a joint organization between the United States and Canada established during the Cold War that provided aerospace warning, air sovereignty, and protection for Northern America. Sharing the responsibility with Convair F-102s and F-106s owned by the United States Air Force, the CF-100 Canuck protected Canada and the United States from Soviet intruders at the height of the Cold War. Canada's Pride In 1955, Yanuz Zhurikovsky, the same Avro Canada test pilot that helped the aircraft fly past the speed of sound, performed another dramatic demonstration flight. During the Farnborough Air Show in England, the chief development test pilot took his Canuck to the skies to perform a falling leaf. In this acrobatic maneuver, the aircraft is allowed to stall and be swayed to the right and the left by the pilot, with the nose steadily pointing in the same direction all throughout the exercise. The feat stunned many aviation and industry experts and spectators, who could not believe that such a large fighter could perform the maneuvers so seamlessly. Zhurikovsky's incredible performance led Belgium to purchase over 50 CF-100s, and even the United States Air Force came close to acquiring several such fighters. As America joined the Korean War in the early 1950s, the U.S. Air Force urgently needed a jet-powered, all-weather, interdiction and surveillance aircraft. In fact, the branch was in such a hurry that the American government was willing to break tradition and considered buying and adapting two foreign designs, Avro Canada's CF-100 Interceptor and the English Electric Canberra Medium Bomber. Still, the Canucks range and payload capabilities were insufficient for the service, and the English rival was selected and later turned into the Martin B-57 Canberra program. Exceeding Expectations Although Avro Canada engineers only designed the Canuck to only last 2,000 hours, the developers soon found out 
that the Interceptor's airframe could serve for over 20,000 hours before the need for retirement. In total, 692 CF-100s of several different variations were produced. The sixth and final proposed CF-100 variant would bridge the stock between the Canuck and its successor, the AF-105 Aero supersonic interceptor, in development during the late 1950s. However, in 1959, following a controversial decision by the Canadian government, work on the CF-105 was terminated. This decision severely damaged the Canadian aero industry in the decades that followed. Despite the program's cancellation, the aircraft remained on the front lines until 1963, when it was replaced in its frontline role by the much faster McDonnell CF-101B Voodoo. Still, the Canuck continued to serve with the 414th Squadron of the Canadian Forces in reconnaissance, training, and electronic warfare roles. All the remaining Royal Canadian Air Force Canucks were withdrawn from service in 1981 after being succeeded by the CC-117 Dassault Falcon. After that, all Canadian Air Force aircraft have been acquired via export, and the CF-100 Canuck remains the only mass-produced aircraft in the nation. Thank you for watching Dark Skies. Don't forget to leave a comment below and hit the like button if you liked our video. And for more historical and military content, subscribe to this and all the channels in our Dark Documentaries family. Stay tuned.